Good morning, amazing students. We're going to be in lesson 2.4 today for magnetic fields. For the warm up, uh, you've got this slide where you're asked to examine these three series of magnets from the sim, and it shows the potential energy levels as well as the kinetic energy levels, but just in one magnet in the first one. And then as a second magnet is placed, and then finally when both magnets are released. So you're going to add labels to the image to try to explain what's happening in each of these three. Uh, and not all um, of these labels are going to be used. So take about three minutes to do this. For activity two, we're going to be reviewing the energy that is in a system. And you need to remember that we should always define our system when we discuss force and energy transfer because, um, you know, in the real world, systems lie within other systems. And so if we're talking about a closed system, that means it's getting no energy from the outside environment around us. Um, and so we just have to be very very clear what we're uh, defining as a system when we work with it. So when we look at objects in a system, uh, we can define those several different ways. And so uh, this was a type of system that we would have seen in, in unit one, where we use a crank to generate uh, kinetic energy in the flywheel, which 
uses that kinetic energy to pull back the spring uh, to, cr to store that as potential energy to the point that we want to launch the ball. So, um, just keep in mind that when we look at systems, even magnetic systems, okay, we need to define it and we need to be able to identify different components in that. So, what I'm asking you to do on this slide is to go into the sim in order to gather evidence uh, either for or against the claim that much more energy was in the launcher system on Wednesday than on Tuesday. So we're going to kind of go after that today. I want to say attack that today, not to disprove it necessarily, but just to find out what the truth is. So um, each of these steps are going to show you exactly what you need to do. So the first thing you'll do is go to the simulation, go to the sim. The second thing you do is grab one weak magnet toward the left side of the screen with its north pole facing up. And then we want to lock this quote unquote launcher magnet in place. So you'll go through each of these eight steps um, and, and you're going to run this through and then you're going to you're going to repeat steps two through six um, and that's going to help you to answer these questions below this so you need to, to follow the directions read the directions follow each step accordingly and then you'll be able to answer you know first question does this evidence support or refute the claim that there was much more energy in the launcher system on Wednesday than on Tuesday and explain your answer. So you should be getting some data, some evidence that either supports claim to or refutes it and you're gonna use complete sentences to help answer uh, all of that out. And for activity three, okay, we're, um, we get this email from Dr. Shapiro saying that now you understand where energy comes from We've talked about that in our energy unit. We would like you to simulate the spacecraft launches to gather data about the amounts of energy in the magnetic launcher system during each launch. We think gathering this data will help us figure out if the spacecraft launch went much faster on Wednesday because there was more energy in the system. Let us know when you have an answer. So in the last chapter, we found evidence that refuted claim one, magnets were misaligned. But we have two claims left, and so we're focusing on claim two, that much more energy was in the launcher system on Wednesday than on Tuesday. So you're gonna go in, you're gonna run through all eight of those steps, you're gonna observe the changes to potential and kinetic energy, and you're gonna answer those questions, okay? Remember that launches required a strong repulsive force, so you're gonna need to use repelling magnets uh, in order to run those different simulations. We're going to use the grid points to measure distance because we want to take a look at what happens when we move them closer together. Okay. Um, and then I want you to think about this. Like, what does the model show you about how the potential energy was different between the launches? What did you notice about the total energy? Um, and so what we want to do is we really want to be able to nail down is claim to supported by the evidence or refuted by the evidence, okay? Um, and so I want you to, to, to work through that, answer those questions. We're not doing uh, activity four at all. So you're just going to use the sim to help you answer all those questions and gather evidence on whether you think... Um, claim to is viable or not, and then you'll turn it in.